शुभ संध्या वक्त सिर्फ दिन आटा में माँग इतना माँ बहन और ही ना uh, yes now we can hear you yes no, no right thank you so much thank you so much there was a technical error that I suppose that I been talking to you all but uh, not much of you answered that's what I was uh, wondering so very good evening to you so we are going very good evening to everyone that we are going to start up our uh, program briefing on sports and fitness program yes understood so it is uh, a pleasure that uh, i took a play i mean i took a chance to address you or facilitate this wonderful evening and spend few minutes uh, maybe one hour with you all and we have a number of guests to speak to you regarding this uh, event and i definitely uh, assure you that's going to be a life changing moment that life changing event that's going to happen in this beautiful evening so once again i welcome you all and let me introduce our uh, guests that who are going to speak to you today and going to uh, be with us throughout the program the guest speaker dr himan de silva who is international sports medicine coordinator at ministry of health he also olympic sports and exercise physician at teaching hospital karapitiya and also we have a care person at chilaka foundation institute senior attorney at law this is champika amarsekar also director general at slf professor rm vijayaratn and country director at lincoln university college dr roshan de lima also we do have public relations officer mr udaya bandar head of the academic at lincoln university college mrs devika vijayanti academic coordinator at slf dr vijayanta kukwatta program director mr bharat hera program coordinator mrs priyani senvirat also i should mention the names of uh, professor amarnath Haruna Nai, head of psychology department, faculty of medical university of Rona. Professor B L H Pereira, director for education at National Olympic Committee. Mr Wilson Gunaratna, senior visiting lecture S L F. Mrs Elisha Eranga Fernando, visiting lecture S L F. So I take pleasure in addressing and introducing these. our guest today and i cordially invite guest speaker dr himan de silva who is international sports medicine coordinator at ministry of health to speak up doctor it is for you thank you very much for your kind introduction and i think everybody can hear me yes we can hear doctor right uh, thank you very much for inviting me as a resource person for this uh, first uh, uh, maybe the first kind of a bsc program uh, started from a, a uni uh, institute like uh, sfi in sri lanka in connection with especially a foreign university the lincoln university in malaysia so uh, basically uh, we have uh, enrolled kind of a distinguished lecturers into the course including uh, one of the senior most uh, professor uh, prof blh perera and uh, a young professor uh, professor amarnath kamanayaka who is the head of the physiology department uh, of university of rona faculty of medicine karapitiya uh, and 
Mr. Ranga Fernando. Uh, Ola in a special kind of a background related to connected to sports uh, industry, fitness industry, and uh, human anatomy, uh, physiology, and so on. So uh, basically, uh, this will be a three-year course. Uh, uh, the selection procedure were to uh, enroll our uh, previous students who uh, followed our diploma and certificate course in uh, fitness uh, at the uh, uh, SFI. Uh, Sri Lanka students already uh, must be not they must have attended my lectures. Uh, basically, <clears throat> what we want to uh, emphasize here in Sri Lanka when we uh, go to a gym and we, when we confront most of the physical trainers, actually my personal experience, they are lacking basic. Uh, right. And uh, uh, because of that, uh, for, uh, for can you hear me? There was a disconnection and reconnection. So because of that, uh, uh, Sri Lanka Foundation Institute uh, thought of uh, giving uh, kind of a strong uh, background knowledge uh, for our students, uh, starting from uh, the grassroots level. For that, they started this certificate course in fitness uh, and strength and conditioning. Uh, then it was upgraded up to the diploma level. Then uh, we thought of uh, upgrading further into the BSc level. So the University of Lincoln uh, gave us a tremendous uh, support, uh, mm -hmm. accepting our proposal and uh, enrolling our students into their curriculum. So basically we develop the curriculum in parallel with uh, Lincoln BSc, there were some minor modifications uh, which are in parallel with uh, our requirement. Uh, basically, the course stays the same as uh, Lincoln BSc. And uh, what we thought of giving uh, the students the core knowledge, the anatomy and physiology and the biomechanics and sports psychology, uh, fitness related other uh, paramedical and scientific uh, background. So for that, uh, we have decided on uh, recruiting a certain uh, experience uh, lecturers uh, like uh, Professor B.L.H. Perra and Professor Amarnath uh, for the starting semesters. So we will be introducing uh, some other uh, well experienced uh, lecturers into the course in, uh, in future, right? So basically, uh, those uh, lectures will be uh, in online because of the situation, uh, the online uh, kind of a lecturing will be more suitable because uh, without any hindrance, we can conduct uh, online lectures uh, because uh, nowadays the distance learning up to the PhD level are well accepted worldwide. And anybody can join uh, the lectures modules uh, through internet and uh, the physical presence not required most of the time. So about, uh, I mean, a considerable proportion of the lectures will be online, but there are some uh, mandatory uh, physical uh, lectures uh, where you had to attend to the lecture hall and uh, confront the lecturer and do the needful, like practical works uh, you cannot do uh, by online. So basically uh, there's a huge demand uh, for well uh, taught professional uh, kind of a, a fitness uh, gurus and uh, coaches and uh, personal trainers in the industry. So our duty is to uh, produce uh, internationally recognized such professionals in Sri Lanka. So what we uh, did uh, during past couple of years through our uh, institute, the foundation, uh, there's a 
barrier uh, for foreign jobs and uh, kind of a recognition in government institutes in Sri Lanka because these uh, people who are working in the fitness industry, they don't have kind of a regulation. They don't have kind of a recognition by a reputed body. Actually, we decided upon Sri Lanka Medical Council and we send a proposal uh, to them to consider the fitness industry and their professionals like personal trainers, gym instructors, manual physical therapies, so-called masseuses, to be recognized as a part of the uh, medical, paramedical team. So uh, the proposal already been evaluated and it's in the pending state. So after some time, they will give us the green light and there will be a recognition under certain professional uh, category within the Sri Lanka Medical Council, then the professional will be awarded with a kind of a, a Sri Lanka Medical Council registration. So when you see these nursing officers, physiotherapists, uh, doctors, and uh, midwives, they all got registered under certain uh, categories within Sri Lanka Medical Council. When some professionals get the recognition under Sri Lanka Medical Council, they have the privilege of being recognized at the international level. So when you apply for a foreign job, what will happen? They will ask for your medical council recognition uh, and uh, the experience. So, so for that, uh, what we thought of uh, proposing Sri Lanka Medical Council to recognize our diploma certificate and especially the BSc uh, certificate in this industry, then there's a huge chance all these followers, the students who are attending in this uh, particular course, will get the first chance to be recognized as the professionals in fitness industry. So looking forward to that. And uh, we will be joining with the online lectures uh, very sooner. Uh, till such time, uh, very warm welcome to the course. And I hope all of you attend on time, uh, be punctual uh, for the lectures. And there will be 400 hours of lecturing, but mere lecturing won't sufficient for the course. Uh, you will have to do a lot of reading. We will be providing you a lot of uh, learning material, uh, which you have to go through uh, internet and find and learn. So you can use the library uh, at the Sri Lanka Foundation Institute. But most of the lectures and the learning materials will be online, web-based, uh, and uh, soft copies will be given. So basically, the outline of the course will be uh, like that. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, that's all from my side. I hope that everybody will uh, attend the lectures and the practicals uh, without getting absent. So I expect you to have the 100% attendance, not the 80%. So otherwise, you won't be able to uh, catch the missed important lectures, especially in anatomy, exercise, physiology, and physiology. Good luck for everybody. Uh, over to you, uh, our guest, on, uh, the host. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. It is my apologies uh, that as a facilitator, I have uh, made a bit of a mistake on the agenda and hope that everyone understands that uh, as I began this, uh, there was a power cut, right? So extremely sorry. Uh, there was a the mistake uh, according to the agenda that I have made that uh, Dr. Himans uh, it was uh, down the line, but uh, 
my mistake that I have uh, call upon him. So I think the madam at the uh, attorney at law, uh, Mrs. Champika Amarasekara would apologize, I mean, forgive me and excuse me. And I would cordially invite her uh, to address the audience. Madam, it's over to you. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. I hope all of you can hear me. Yes, what a yes. uh, It's a landmark thing, actually, with uh, Roshan also in the picture. I can see him. And uh, just to give you a background of what exactly we are doing with uh, Lincoln University, I take full pleasure in bringing Lincoln University to Sri Lanka Foundation Institute. In 2020, I brought them over when I took uh, the, the job as their chairperson at SLFI. I introduced um, the Lincoln University to SLFI and we signed an affiliation agreement. And since then, I am very happy and very proud that Lincoln University has done justice to me more than anything else. And it, they have done justice to all our students. And uh, SLFI, which had just stopped at doing higher national diplomas, now I'm just uh, very happily announcing even not only a BSc, but if you are to do your master's or even a PhD, now SLFI is the uh, place for all of you. So. I am very happy and very proud that I was able to introduce and also I am um, Dr. Roshan Dilima is there. He will speak after me. He will also give you a background of what the university is uh, like um, in Malaysia. It is a UGC recognized certified um, university in, um, uh, in Malaysia and it is a very well placed university. So you do not have to worry about any other um, certificates or degrees that you all are getting. Anyway, it is with affiliation uh, with SLFI. So uh, <clears throat> again, I like to tell you these sports and fitness programs uh, with the help of our very own Dr. Himan De Silva has been actually one of the very, very important programs that SLFI had always offered. And Dr. Himan De Silva has been in the forefront doing all these things for years now. But from wherever it had to stop at SLFI, to take it further, today to another level, it is actually bringing me a lot of pleasure. So I like to actually take this opportunity to welcome all of you with a very warm heart that uh, this is a landmark uh, situation for all of us and uh, that we are heading towards a degree in sports and fitness and uh, I like to tell all of you that you all are in very very safe hands. Um, Dr. Roshan is always there and also Dr. Himan has not uh, gone away anywhere. He's, he'll always be there. He is the one who was behind all these things. And uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Himan, at this moment, I would like to also, from my side, apologize to you that we had to jump the gun and put you forward. I think, you know, it was, uh, you were like fourth in the list to talk. And uh, if you had to talk, if you have to talk and explain anything further, please do so even after we talk. So I, I hope you're there actually. And our, uh, 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 our own uh, lecturer who has who's at SLFI, Dr. Uh, Mr. Bharata Herat, will always be there to support you. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and I like if you do not stop at this, you all can go further. And at the moment where uh, Sri Lanka is actually grappling with a, a dollar crisis and we are having a big problem with regard to this, this a qualification will help all of you uh, to seek employment abroad 
and uh, the, it will actually pay a very good salary to all of you. We know that very well. And uh, there's a dearth of such people in other countries. And when you get these qualifications and especially a degree, it would actually uh, be very helpful to you in your future. So I wish I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of you the very best. And uh, I'm sure Dr. Roshan, uh, I don't like to go into his territory. He will talk about the Lingan University actually. Uh, so let me also speak a few words in Sinhalese. Super Sandhya Ava Kobusama Denatama. Lincoln University Eka Dedas Vise Mama Me Lanka Padana Maya Tanega Handunwa Dunne Mama Egana Mama Nihatama Niva Itama Santutu Enama. A Satutu Vima Vada Beguna Vilati Enne, Lincoln University Ekeng. Um, Kisima, Krasnia, Knatu, Apia, or Ruben, the Kamara, Nikolas, and the Karaginawa, Yalagitawa programs, Goda, Yanama. You think Apine, HMD, Haking, Navatapu, Hekata, then degree status, Sakadena, Lincoln University, Idripatela, Tianaka, Ganama, Mitam, Saturday, Sahai, Old Mang Ekatis, Tutuan, the Ganama, Obala, Sielu, the Natama, Idiri, Edi, Pitrataka Hunda, Rasava, Klabagan, in Santame. Avastava Tama in the Avastava Kurganda Kilamama Oblagging Illa Sitna at the make him a baby, a pay doctor Himan Smitherma over Sla Samaga in Divi, a pay Bartha Herat, a Silu de Namo at the Tama, well at Itama. You all have a really a team that is full of strength and, and they are really like stars out there. They are shining in their own capacity. They are shining in their <clears throat> particular fields. So they are always there. I think Egolomi <laughs> so wish you all the best Sahaya Lebe Kilamam me Balabur Tueno, Egnisa, me, the Nimagi Mika, Navatella, Mama, Doctor Dilimata, Ne, Mangitani, Ape, DG, Professor R. M. Vijayratna will take over from here now, I think. So, good luck to all of you. And it is really heartwarming to see so many people. Uh, who have taken part in this. Supun, I can see you're nodding your head. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I could hear you clapping as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Over to you, Dr. Vijayaratna. <clears throat> thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, this is actually, the, as a uh, leader, as a chairperson, it's a really blessing and uh, encouraging words for the, the team that uh, Engulf at this evening. So actually, the, we have, uh, uh, I mean, you know, a bit of a change in the agenda that uh, Dr. Roshan de Lima, uh, Lima will speak at this moment, and Dr. Vijay Ratna, the followed by. Uh, Dr. Roshan, it's over to you to address as a Lincoln uh, director for Sri Lanka. All right. Uh, thank you, and good evening. Hopefully, am I audible to all of you, or? Do I have to do any adjustments, please? Yes, we can hear you. All right, great. Um, I was just, uh, I just joined a couple of minutes late. I was listening to these uh, wonderful thoughts put forward by Dr. Hiran, being a uh, leading uh, professional coach as well as a lecturer. So not to go further, the chairperson, as she correctly pointed out, Two years ago, embarked on a journey to Sri Lanka Foundation. And um, she has been a real strength. Um, I would say a strong pillar 
a major pillar behind uh, all this uh, work that has been happening around. She has quite done a lot of revamping at Sri Lanka Foundation, given a new, new thoughts, new looks, especially when it comes to academia, she has given a lot of uh, actually vibrant ingredients. Right? So uh -huh. not, to, uh, not to take anything away. Uh, I would uh, completely give the entire credit to her good self. Uh, I know it's when you are working with state-owned institutions, there are so many protocols. I think she has uh, broken all these shackles, uh, protocols, everything, and she has done what is required for the society for the time being. And uh, not to just forget or uh, nothing less, I would like to take pleasure to uh, bring up Dr. Professor Vijay Ratna. Professor Vijay, uh, Professor Vijay Ratna being the DG, uh, Director General of the institution, has given the required leadership. I'm sure that you are not, some of you, most of you are not, uh, uh, I don't have to introduce what is SLFI. You have been there, you have followed diplomas, you have followed attendees. So you know his leadership. And also Mr. Bharata, who had been there as the coordinator, and also the faculty members, the scholars who are present here, and uh, my staff members, and the distinguished. Sorry, I uh, saw Dr. Vijayanta was, is there, uh, the academic head of Sri Lanka Foundation, Dr. Vijayanta, and uh, uh, Mr. Uday was there. And also, I could see my staff members and staff members from SLFI. And also, my dear students, it's uh, really a pleasure to talk to you this evening. Uh, sports science is one of the programs that we have been looking for a long time. We have been doing some work on this uh, to introduce this degree program, the science program, Bachelor of Science program for students who had done a diploma in the respective field. Uh, I was listening to what ma'am was telling, ma'am Champika was telling that, lucrative foreign employments, of course, yes, why not? Uh, looking at the global scenario, you may find a lot of opportunities for personal trainers, even for personal trainers. And also, uh, wherever, uh, wherever uh, the gaps are seen, you will find these opportunities in Western world as well. So, as Dr. Hiran was explaining, it, <clears throat> it's good to hear that Medical Council is going to recognize as a para uh, division. So that will give a lot of confidence. That will give quite a lot of uh, immunity for the program uh, and, and, and for the followers who have been recognized, basically. So a bachelor degree will certainly give a real uh, boost to all these things. So apparently, as Ma'am Champika has spoken, uh, the Lincoln University <clears throat> Malaysia. Now it has been in operation. We have a few branch campuses. A postgraduate institution is recently been established in Dubai. Uh, a branch campus came up in Sydney. And also another branch campus for health, allied health is going to come up in uh, Dallas, that is in US. So these are all branch campus and we have a branch campus already in Sri Lanka. The most of the branch campus are going to get specialized. Also we have in, one in Nigeria. So most of these branch campuses will specialize in allied health and health and life sciences. In Sri Lanka also, we are very keen on allied health and life sciences. In Sri Lanka, of course, we closely work with so many associations, para associations, like we work with physiotherapy association. We exclusively work with the government physiotherapy association. Then we work with uh, 
radiographers association pharmacy association uh, we work with government nurses association uh, we work with we intend to work with the mlti uh, association as well so we are not new in para industry so we have been there in para industry for a long time it's i was very delight to hear that uh, the uh, medical council has some initiatives have been taken to recognize this program this uh, uh, qualification bachelor's qualification for sports science as an um, section of industry so talking about lincoln as i was i'm sure that some of you would have done your homework you would have gone through some of the you would have done a web survey the moment you key in the word google when you google the word you might see lincoln popping up all over the place not only in sri lanka uk usa australia everywhere new zealand probably new zealand is one of the oldest universities for lincoln but these are all affiliated franchises of abraham lincoln the great abraham lincoln the president of united states his foundation has given this franchises to all these universities and campuses to run the program so his vision of education his vision of future is seen through his legacy for 100 years um has just been live and it will be live for another 100 200 years because his principles are very simple he says that each and every head has to be cultivated very simple so a man who has come through a mill is telling this story i'm sure that you have heard about the first letter which has been wrote to his uh, son's um, teacher it is a world renowned letter how he sees education very fascinating how he has seen education is very fascinating 100 years ago now people are talking about soft skills people are talking about uh, um, human skills people are talking about um uh, uh competencies for abraham lincoln the great abraham lincoln has spoken this 100 years ago this is what visionary people are all about this is what we are, this is what uh, uh, people who with great vision who can see the future actually do things hi basically having been said all these stories i'm sure that uh, you have done the web surveys but i'll just take you give you a virtual tour since you are studying in our at sri lanka foundation institution would like to know uh, just a quick virtual tour of the university how it looks like and uh, what are the you know facilities etc at the university right um, so if you can see my screen right all right run this presentation uh, i think the participants can see my screen so about the university we have three campuses in malaysia lincoln is more or less famous for their medical school our medical school is not only recognized uh, it's probably recognized by uh, in, in many countries our medical school is more or less uh, recognized in in, in us Uh, also sri lanka medical council recognizes our medical school india medical council recognizes our medical school chinese medical council recognizes our medical school so i don't have to tell further if our medical faculty or college is recognized then the other faculties i do not have to tell you much so they are well uh, positioned and well established so talking about the recognition we have the ugc recognition commonwealth association uh, recognition international university association recognition membership actually uh, also who recognition wes canada does recognizes sri lanka medical council and this is the branch campus setup in colombo we have where else we are specializing in um allied health and engineering especially 
these two areas allied health health and engineering so we tend to always improve this area because we see that the world is quite short but always there is a scarcity for such competencies today as we talk there are about 2.5 million people are required especially para paramedics are required in the, by the western world not only by the western world also in australia new zealand all put together so the para that's a huge gap today you can see that nurses are going to german they are going to germany they are going to uk they are going to australia they are going to, likewise pharmacists physiotherapists all these people are, they have a lot of opportunities canada i'm sure the same opportunity is there for uh, sports fitness or sports science so i don't see uh, the investment the time the uh, resources put into this would be wasted the return on investment talk about the roi as a program of investment the return on investment i'm sure that it's very lucrative compared to other programs the policy right? so these are some of the key people at the university you get the president you get the vice chancellor the chancellor and a few vice chancellors you know? and also we get these faculty deans mm. so the program comes under the um faculty of science and a, a professor philip professor philip is an indian origin uh, is a australian citizen working for lincoln a nice person so in this guidance the faculty of science has grown a lot for the past few years and we have like different faculty we have a completely different faculty for dentistry medicine pharmacy these are all faculties because fairly uh, fairly big number of students learn also we have business accounting computing etc and also we have these fields of studies medicine dentistry nursing pharmacy science hospitality business and accounting social science engineering and built environment etc computer right talking about uh, i would like to just always i do this when i do a presentation i always would like to do some benchmarking benchmarking in the sense just to identify universities because usually any university in the world is identified by qs ranking if you look at qs ranking in sri lanka i know i just want to show you this because if you go to qs ranking and choose the qs ranking universities in sri lanka you get few state universities here you can see peradinia palambo jaffna moratua sri jayawardenepura this is doubt by the qs ranking and you can see that Palambo University stands in 295, 291, 300. Um, Peradeniya University leading with 221 in Asia, right? So in Asia, you get about 10,000 universities. So being within 500 is really, really good for any state. Because you you don't find any uh, pri privately funded universities in Sri Lanka. There are 10, 15, but you don't find anyone in this list. Only you find few state-owned universities. As you look, there are. Plenty of other state-owned universities. There are about six, seventeen state-owned universities, but only few is listed under the QS rank. Similarly, if you see the the world university ranking uh, under the quality education, because world university ranking is carried out, this is not 2020, 2021. I have uh, the world university ranking is carried out with uh, how the universities are engaged and how the universities do practice the 17. sustainable goals under the 17 sustainable goals you get quality education as one of the uh, so how universities have contributed to the quality education this is one of the ways of measuring so these two uh, under this if you see under the uh, world university ranking and with the 17 sdg contribution uh, kalambu university comes first and peradeniya is not far behind it so 401 401 etc within 500 so these two universities are recognized to be really good university in sri lanka let's go back and see in malaysia what has happened in malaysia the world university ranking lincoln has been put within 
for quality education by the world university rank that gives you an impression where we stand i don't have to tell anything further because we we have to always compare and benchmark ourselves with other as you can see uh, otherwise we can always call ourselves we are the best no it doesn't happen that way we are always compare and contrast and see because if i call myself i'm the best because there is no rationale behind i have always compare and contrast so that is what i'm trying to compare and show you we are within 100 when it comes to the um, uh, the university the world university ranking so under the qs ranking i think i missed yeah under the qs ranking we stand 351 Three five one within five hundred. Within five hundred, as you can see here, three five one. We have improved now. This was in twenty twenty one. I think we have improved further now. You know why this ranking and all is important. This ranking, ranking, which gives you an uh, idea, it gives you a uh, feeling, seeing that you are studying in a growing university. You are studying in a university where it's constantly developing innovation right and these are some of the pictures of the facilities at the university in malaysia and at the labs because we have the medical we have the cyber anatomy lab it's a, uh, a 3d uh, and now they have converted into a 5d modeling laboratory where students could experience the human anatomy they learn using technology this was uh, this lab uh, i think this was uh, initially established 3d cyber anatomy was established in 2016 or 17 now they have upgraded into uh, the 5g uh, technology i guess so now they have 5g uh, sorry yeah ideas um then you get this uh, pathology museum we have a kind of a museum inside the university for medical students and also the laboratory facilities that you can see biochemistry pharmacy etc and also simulation and skill labs these are all for uh, dental dental uh, we have a fairly um, good dental faculty with 180 Uh, workstations uh, so the university can accommodate uh, uh, 300 plus uh, 300 plus dentist study students you know that it's somewhat equal to university spare than your dental faculty capacity right so we have this aeronautics aircraft maintenance uh, engineering uh, also electrical engineering uh, civil uh, mechanic etc and uh, we do have accommodation for these foreign students and also we have our own transportation fleet yes own transportation and also if you see the demography you see the private sector employment these in sri lanka bank and finance minister of agriculture this is how the demography of sri lanka based on education you can see part of students and also ministry of health right so these are the students who are studying with us basically somebody can i think there are a lot of disturbance somebody can stop this right so basically this is what i have to talk about the university and also as usual let me try to uh, tell you what you can see on the web usually i uh, used to share my thoughts with students that what is not on the web what is not written there at present the university has uh, i think it's 111000 more than 100000 students who graduated from lincoln all around the world the university is operating in about 20 plus countries 2500 plus offshore and in house uh, faculty members are working in sri lanka also i can proudly tell about 10000 students have graduated for the last 10 years 
at the initial stage students had got the gone down there for their studies and since 2015 16 when we started offshore operations in sri lanka majority of the students have got their qualification from here and they have gone elsewhere in the world right and also i must tell our employability rate is about 97% that gives an indication that our curriculums are our curricula is properly delivered competence are properly uh, uh, imparted to the students so therefore uh, i don't see a problem of students getting engaged in some activity and also to add to that we also like now our the president's principle is to see the entrepreneurship what he says is it doesn't matter if he's a medical student or if he's a paramedic or he's a science or whatever the student should have uh, entrepreneurship skills which could be imparted to the students as a physical trainer or as a personal trainer uh, or as a uh, you know uh, employee you must have this entrepreneurship skills i have met so many personal trainers who have a lot of entrepreneurship skills in middle east they have been frequently traveling up and down to dubai i meet quite a lot of physical trainers they are doing really well so this opportunity is quite like a big opportunity that i see and you are in good hands as ma'am chapika was explaining you are in really good hands so i don't see i don't see any problem you have a good set of faculty members i could see great scholars have come forward to help as it is a foundation institution being a state institution can attract the best faculty members and and talking about the quality there is nothing to worry about the quality they will never compromise the quality and we will never compromise the quality so the university is really really happy to work with sri lanka foundation institution because not only the state owned organization also the leadership given and also how things are done there we have i would proudly tell that we have about 80 90 students for phd's who are pursuing phd's as you know that phd is the highest declaration of qualification we have a lot of um, you know uh, exposure in this area and uh, these phd students we started this program last year and by now we have around uh, 80 to 90 students enrolled in this phd programs so you must be thinking 80 to 90 is not a big no no it's a big amount it's a big it's a big amount for phd right so as ma'am champika was explaining um, the the vibrant culture you know you you want a certificate program competency certificate level competency you go to sri lanka foundation the highest declaration yes you go to sri lanka foundation you want you, you want a phd in in health sciences you go to sri lanka foundation you want a bsc in sports science you can get it there you want a diploma still you can get it so i don't have to tell this uh, vibrant looking culture so i think all in all everything is set all these things are happening well so i think you are in good hands and i wish you nothing all the best and bit of a luck and a commitment one thing you must uh, remember that there are a lot of obstacles there are a lot of problems in our lives time to come there is going to be a lot of commitments but one thing you must remember one thing the paper qualification will not leave you in which will not leave you everything might leave you in the day you might have a good position now tomorrow it might not be there you might have you might be a rich person today tomorrow you might be a poor person but end of the day whatever that is done the qualification that you have acquired the qualification that you have gained the qualification that you have obtained will always be there with you which will always give you immunity to reinstate yourself we are you were so it's like this rubber ball when you just push down a rubber ball inside the water it might just pop out again you can't keep a rubber ball inside the water likewise this qualification this qualification the paper qualification or the competencies that you have required it's like a rubber ball only so whatever this comes out you can just 
you have to hardly put a lot of effort to keep it inside the water once you with allow it just it comes out so you can't help it so the purpose qualification is also like that so take uh, take accountability take responsibility this one one and a half years because credit transfer program is one and a half years basically some will be following two years but whatever it is just a two year of commitment for a bachelor degree lifetime so you will not go into two or three bachelor degrees some of you might go on up to the phd level and be a scholar be a lecturer so we would like to do our uh, we would like to extend our blessings to all this so we are here to help as ma'am santika said we are here to help all of us are here starting from myself uh, sorry ma'am champika is always there i am here from here and also not to forget professor vijay ratna dr vijayanth is there and also this wonderful scholars who had come forward to help us with this program i warmly welcome them on board to the university as uh, faculty members and also would like take pride to have them on board as lecturers thank you very much have a pleasant evening bye bye thank you very much uh, dr roshan uh, it's really uh, i think more than what we expected and it is a blessing it is uh, your guidance and on top of all the introduction is really uh, fascinating thank you so much and i do feel it's a privilege to be a student at lincoln university which is incorporated with slf sri lanka foundation i think the luckiest gents and uh, ladies and gents at this evening you will experience your future with slf and lincoln next uh, i would cordially invite professor rm vijayaratna who has been really uh, at the agenda he should be on the top but uh, with the changes that he has humbly accepted that uh, he will uh, going to address you at this moment dr vijayarat i cordially invite you i think uh, sorry to interrupt i think professor has texted me that uh, power he is struggling with uh, power failure i think i'm not sure whether he has recovered or what is uh, professor vijayarat around i think he was having a power issue power failure okay. okay then okay. i think we can move into next wait uh, let's check see if you can find him around i'm sure that he texted me he just Is left me a message yeah certain areas we really face with power cuts mm. yeah he has uh, i i don't see him i think he had texted me that saying that he's unable to he might might be around because he was around um, he was just telling me that he will not be able to sometimes so i think he is not around you may continue please right so uh then uh, i would uh, cordially invite professor amarnath karuna nayaka head of psychology department faculty of medical university of rona along with uh, professor b l h pereira director for education at national olympic committee professor amarnath and professor uh, pereira i cordially invite you to have the discussion and uh, explanations as uh, at this moment uh, thank you uh, can you hear me yes professor yes professor we can yeah. hear you uh, yeah. good evening to you all yes thank you uh, sorry for my back <laughs> were lightning and the background we are experiencing a power cut here also uh, yes first of all i would like to congratulate all the uh, enrollment enrolled uh, students for this prestige course uh, uh, so can i have share my slides yes professor yeah uh, can you see my screen yes we do we do here let's see yeah so uh, uh 
can you see my screen hello can yes we can see yeah, okay, we can right. see it yeah so i have been interested to uh, conduct uh, lectures related to human physiology uh, in this course uh, so if you go to the lincoln website you can see the aim of this bachelor of science sports and fitness course the the first objective is to achieve knowledgeable and skillful practical in the field of sports and fitness to practice uh, provide idea about the physiological basis for exercise and physical activity in direct application to physical fitness and aesthetic condition for progressive theory and practice so uh, my area is physiology so let me give a small introduction what is physiology so it is a study of human body function so we studied what is normal body function in physiology so it helps to understand the mechanism of life how we how do we breathe, breathe? Uh, why our heart rate increases during exercise uh, how does we how do we memorize things how people learn new things so it explain mechanisms of our body function so don't take it as a uh, new territory so it is about your own body so make it uh, it as a, not as a challenge take it as a, a, a make it your passion to learn it so when you know the physiology it is very easy to understand your body and uh, you can easily understand what is normal what is abnormal yes why we should learn human physiology it's related to your course uh, uh, yes uh, again it helps to explain uh, normal physiological uh, differences with related to the age so as a physical in uh, instructors you may need to advise your clients in various age groups so their body functions are different although they all are healthy human being so we are if we are fortunate to survive we are passing several stages in life from neonate infant child adult and old age people so it is very important to understand the physiological changes which are related to the aging process and uh, yes i as i explained earlier you may and it help to uh, explain Uh, normal uh, some of the normal findings on your body including how when you, what is happening when you are passing plate or uh, why we are sweat uh, sweating during exercise and how does our body uh, react when for challenges internal and external challenges so all of them are easy to explain if you know the physiology normal body function so subject wise uh, to although this is a wide area there are several subject areas uh, so here in this course we are mainly focused on three four areas cardiovascular physiology respiratory physiology neurophysiology and um, physiology of muscles so uh, although we try to learn them separately but most of them the uh, systems are integrated in during exercises cardiovascular system heart and our blood vessels respiratory system our lungs and the muscles together to 
give the full strength for the human being. Not only that, skin play a major role to dissipate or increase heat generated during exercises. Sweating, conduction, radiation, various measures, it dissipates or removes the excess heat. So therefore, although we learn, divide this subject into uh, subject areas, remember our body acts as a one functioning unit. Yes, here, uh, so during this, we need to uh, understand certain deficient definitions. So exercise, definition for exercise may be different for your field, but for when it comes to physiology, it, differentiation may be somewhat uh, uh, deviated from the common beliefs. So this is a, therefore, I advise you to follow the course in orderly manner, do not skip, make an active learner. So why we are, what we will do this here? Now you are enrolled for a university degree. So liber, university is a place for knowledge, liberty and for learning. So here you have to change your learning or studying pattern. You should play a active role. So most of the time, instead of teaching, what we facilitate is learning. You have to study it. So we will guide you. So how we are going to guide you? So we are using different teaching learning methods, lectures, tutorial, practical classes, some assignments or seminars, or two of you get together and make a common presentation for your peers, followed by a questioning and answering session. So those are the seminars. So maybe a small assignment, write a, uh, uh, one or two pages of uh, uh, topic in a scientific way. So when it comes to the, uh, when come last lectures, it's a guide for self-learning. So it's, we will just guide you what are the important area. So it is your duty to uh, uh, make an advance on that particular area. So when you learn, you will find there are various things, uh, knowledge, various aspects. So there is a core knowledge, you must know it. And there are things called, uh, you should know, uh, knowledge which you should know. And there are, there are some part of knowledge, it is nice to know. So, so when you are studying, try to gather your knowledge around what you must know, the core knowledge and what you should know. If you know the nice to know, yes, definitely you can perform well in the exam. And tutorials, we may have some traditional tutorial or small group discussions in a breaking groups or some online tutorials during this course. Finally, you have to think of the evaluation. Uh, how are you going to score marks in the exam and pass the exam? So gaining knowledge and passing exam is two different entities. You must orientate to face the exam. Yes, I am happy to answer any questions or answers. So we will, uh, I will uh, leave in to it. Till the end. So thank you for your uh, for the opportunity to uh, talk with you. It is uh, really nice to uh, work with you, and uh, I'm sure we can uh, have a fruitful uh, discussion and a course. And I wish you all the best for your new journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Amaranath Karuna Naika. I think it is a uh, short but very sweet. Thank you once again, Dr. Uh, Professor Amranath. Uh, I think uh, we have next person, uh, Professor B.L.H. Pereira, to speak up, uh, Director for Education at National Olympic Committee. Doctor, it's over to you. Um, good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, Madam uh, Champika, 
and Dr. Roshan, um, thank you very much for all the briefing that you have given to all of us. Um, I'm, uh, I think I'm audible to everyone, uh, hopefully. Uh, yes, Professor. Yes, Professor. Thank, you. Thank, you very, thank you very much. A uh, couple of points. Not uh, I'm, I'm, um, I have now almost passed in my um, very much a um, uh, lot of experience life um, with this uh, sport-oriented uh, uh, learning and teaching. Uh, my specialty come with uh, managing sport. Uh, how the sport should manage in a country, in a club, or in a, in a institute, uh, that's my specialty. So in that connection, I should thank Dr. Himan uh, for inviting me. I don't know, um, we had, um, I have met him during um, Birmingham Games uh, in, um, in uh, UK. Uh, we had a small chat, then he suddenly called me and invited me to uh, say, join us with the program. So I'm very happy uh, because one important thing, one, one important aspect, uh, with all these uh, many years of experience I have, uh, we are yet to cross intellectualism into sport. We are lacking. Um, I, I, as an athlete for many years, uh, from school day to national level, uh, working in very international uh, arenas. Uh, and, uh, our system is a bit um, uh, kind of, a, I would say, challenging. But in that context, I, I see managing sport is one of the wonderful subjects, but okay. I think three areas mentioned in this uh, program. Uh, May I sports, sports communication, uh, sport and fitness management, and sports industry. Uh, three top, three areas that we we to cover. I'm going to cover in this uh, degree program. Uh, to share my knowledge and share my experience for a number of years, working in many, many um, uh, institutes and uh, locally and in um, uh, foreign countries. So uh, that's one of the important things that I see um, is a good effort uh, taken by the Foundation Institute um, you know, the strong uh, Madam uh, Champika, you have taken us very brave, um, uh, I would say, uh, uh, decision. Because um, you could see our sport. Uh, you have seen our sport, uh, how we fare, how we turn. But sport um, today with uh, COVID and economic disaster and, and then the political and various uh, situations in our country. Uh, sport is a, uh, is a concept that uh, strongly addresses many issues. Mm -hmm. It's not only bringing medals to country or dollars to country, but it will safeguard our nation uh, very soon, very, uh, I mean, very essential. Look at our, uh, I would say, you know, the generation that we have, alpha generation. Nobody cares of these uh, generation. They are forgotten. Within another 10 years, there will be youth in our country, but our, our situation. So that sport can do many things, sport and fitness. So I'm not going to talk very much. We will, during the classes, we will uh, try to uh, develop this um, discussion with uh, the students and we can learn uh, through interaction. Uh, I hope uh, there will be a wonderful program, a uh, wonderful opportunity for students to take up this um, with a solid institute, um, because um, I have gone through many, many programs similar, uh, but one of the things that I need, I always say, a solid foundation. Uh, I know for, as an institute, foundation institute is uh, uh, very, um, uh, very comprehensive, structured organization, which is a 
uh, wonderful to see that uh, taken up sport as a very, um, very um, uh, meaningful way. So wish you wish, wish all the, the participants or the, the students who enroll a uh, bright future with sport and sport learning and the, for the foundation and all the managing personnel to, uh, to take it, uh, this from strength and to strength. And same way, Lincoln University, yes, um, that's wonderful. Uh, just about, I just returned from Malaysia. Uh, it's a wonderful, I have seen a lot of facilities because I was attending a diving, um, uh, Asian diving um, seminar. I was lecturing there. Um, I, you have wonderful facilities all over the country. I was amazed uh, to see. Uh, that's something great. Uh, I hope um, the university and uh, it's a collect, correct mixture uh, to do a similar program in applied. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for your encouraging words uh, at this evening for our enrolling students. And next, uh, I will cordially invite uh, Mr. Bharat Herat from, uh, to address you with regard to the values and content of the program. Dr. Bharat, uh, Mr. Bharat, it is over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, our Madam Champika uh, Amrasekara. The chairperson of Sri Lanka Foundation and uh, Mr. Vijay Rakha, uh, the director of Sri Lanka Foundation and uh, the director of the Inter University, uh, Dr. Roshan, and uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Himan Bisilla. He is the actually he's the coordinator from uh, the Ministry of Health, and uh, Professor Amarnath and Professor B. L. H. Pereira, and uh, Dr. Vijayant and uh, Mr. Wilson Gunratna, and other distinguished guests. I, uh, I hope you all can see me because I'm also facing this power cut. And uh, so before that, you know, so I would like to, you know, say something about the Sri Lanka Foundation because Sri Lanka Foundation is the pioneers of adult education. So we are not uh, within this, uh, the formal education system, actually. So we are, you know, running uh, programs in the uh, uh, non-formal education, through the non-formal education system, because, you know, now, you know, very limited crowd running through this formal education and they are, you know, uh, getting the qualifications like, you know, after the I level, so they go through the ZCO and, you know, so they are directing to the uh, normal traditional university system and they are, you know, obtaining their paper qualifications, especially for, you know, going for the different, you know, the calibers. But uh, the Sri Lanka Foundation, actually, uh, we highly concerned about the people who are not uh, go through this uh, formal education system and uh, we are actually focusing uh, that type of segment you know especially uh, there are you know the, the competent uh, people are there and uh, so we are focusing to deliver uh, some education you know through the non-formal uh, system we are trying to give them qualification uh, for getting them into this uh, the, the the professional horizons uh, in the local uh, local scenarios as well as the international level and uh, I can remember how we started this program actually in 2011. So actually uh, we have done a Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Foundation Academics. We have done a small research to understand about the market, pot market potential for this non-formal education, especially focusing this uh, sports, is, uh, sports industry. And we got some information about uh, the, you know, especially uh, a focus segment like uh, the fitness trainers and uh, the, especially the fitness industry, they are lacking with uh, some, you know, uh, the, the paper qualification as well as the, the qualifications to uh, embarking their uh, future, especially, you know, when they are going for uh, the local and the international level uh, job opportunities. So therefore, Sri Lanka Foundation in 2011, we introduced uh, a special program, uh, certificate course for fitness trainers. It's a certificate level, level four program targeting uh, these fitness trainers. Actually, it was a successful program and uh, now it, it gave some sort of, you know, courage for us to, you know, continue this uh, certificate program up to the diploma, national diploma. Now, today we are happy about this uh, stage of this level because now we are waiting to start our 
BAC in uh, sports and fitness. Now, actually, uh, we all know uh, the other, you know, uh, the uh, good professors as well as our chairperson already spoke about the Sri Lanka Foundation, the qualification, the opportunities, and when, when you are, you know, <laughs> getting uh, the uh, uh, international, <laughs> international uh, job opportunities. Yes, of course, we have to, you know, So, Bharata, you are muted, I think. I think now it's okay, no? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? This is now. Yes, Mr. Bharata. Yeah, yeah, you okay. Now, can the Sri Lanka uh, Foundation now in the right track of uh, giving, you know, this uh, specialized BAC degree, especially the people who completed their uh, national and the uh, higher national level of uh, diploma, level five stages. So actually now uh, this program, this awareness program, actually we have scheduled for only one and a half hours. So therefore, I would like to you know directly jump to a, a small uh, you know program briefing about our syllabi as well as you know this is actually top up degree. Uh, so we actually we give this qualification uh, for the people who completed their level uh, uh, level four and five uh, uh, level level four certificate and the level five diploma levels. So therefore, you know, I would like to, you know, give you some idea about our program structure. Uh, so I will share this uh, program structure, especially uh, look at the different, uh, you know, the modules as well as uh, the module-wise module -wise segregation according to the uh, semesters. Okay, so in this program, you have to complete actually uh, 15 subjects. Okay, so these 15 subjects we have segregated into uh, the semesters wise. So within uh, two years, you have to complete this uh, 15 subjects starting from uh, the, uh, uh, the, the first module, uh, fundamentals of biomechanics and anatomy, physiology, and uh, ultimately it goes to the final project. Okay, so, so I will actually share this uh, at the inauguration uh, ceremony. So I'll share this, uh, the syllabi as well as I will share the comprehensive, you know, the detailed syllabus about uh, the each and every subject and its respective modules. And you can, you know, get some idea about the different, you know, the areas uh, and the different, you know, the topics under the each and every module. And also I will uh, share the bylaws because, you know, that is totally, you know, you have to, you know, strictly adhere to the bylaws because, you know, when we are running this program, you have to adhere to some sort of conditions given by the Sri Lanka Foundation as well as the Lincoln University because you know this is a you know, collaborative program so you should adhere to the you know the different you know the terms and conditions as well as the bylaws given by the Sri Lanka Foundation as well as the Lincoln University Malaysia. So that is also you know we compiled with this uh, detailed uh, syllabus and you can see uh, and then you can get some idea about your syllabus and you know the different subjects uh, coming under the semesters. And also you can go through, it's, you know, the detailed syllabus to understand about, you know, the different, you know, the subject wise evaluation, the types of evaluation methods and the, the Professor Amarnath also, you know, mentioned that uh, his subject evaluation, but uh, uh, basically, so in this uh, program, you have to go through the different evaluation methods, like, you know, the written examinations, assignments, and also, you know, you have to face some sort of, you know, the presentations, individual presentations, group presentations, and also work-based, uh, you know, work-based projects. Especially, you know, you have to fill some sort of uh, reflecting logbooks when you are, you know, going to the field site, uh, the experiments, and you have to go for, you know, the different, you know, field site uh, things, and you have to, you know, fill the uh, reflecting logbooks. So those are, you know, very much important when we are, you know, going for the modern day, the novelty education system, uh, especially when we are, you know, following. Uh, this type of international program but in our traditional you know uh, programs like you know our traditional university programs ultimately it's end up with the dissertation but in this program this is actually we are running with uh, some sort of con contemporary methods so in this scenario you have to you know uh, you have to complete finally uh, this uh, the work based uh, project okay this is actually you have to do some sort of reflecting learning logs. You know, you have to, you know, um, develop a reflecting learning log. It is actually now uh, in the level four and the level, level five, when we, when we talk about the learning, the teaching and learning methods, 
that's actually it is all about uh, the the scientific methods of bloom's taxonomy you have completed your level 4 and 5 uh, through a passive learning environment okay so you you actually came across through the passive learning environment but now in this uh, in this program so you have to practice some sort of active you know active learning methods that means you have to go through the active learning environment because you know this is bit uh, you know uh, you you have to you know use your cognition to do uh, some you know some programs under this uh, bac level so in this scenario actually uh, and at the end of this program so you have to actually do some sort of using some sort of you know theoretical knowledge your knowledge you gain through this program you knowledge that that gain knowledge you have to put in the uh, put in put into the practice scenario basically in the in this course industry so there are you know the practical is always happening so in this uh, the project okay in this uh, reflecting logbook logbook uh, uh, the method of uh, learning you had to put all the uh, knowledge that you have gained through this program into practice okay so you have to test all the theories into practice and you know ultimately you have to uh, you know prepare this logbook this is actually you know give all the guidance given by our you know the professors our our you know doctors especially they are specialized in this subject and they will help you they they will give their maximum support to do this you know comprehend thing uh, at the end of this program okay so that is the you know that is the end of this program because you know that the, that end is you know you had to put your all the you know all your knowledge in the in the in your cognitions to uh, complete this program within uh, two years and uh, during that period of time so you have to follow these 15 subjects you know starting from uh, the you know the basics of the anatomy and the physiology and it comes with some you know the exercise physiology and the fitness management and that part is done by our uh, the uh, our uh, good professor bilesh uh, perra and the sports management of sports industry those are very very you know very very you know attractive subject uh, these days you know you should learn uh, this type of subjects to you know get some you know for get some idea about the you know the foreign exposures of uh, this subject and uh, and another thing is the biomechanics it is this is a new subject for you it is not covered in your level uh, level 4 and level 5 it's a new subject it's a new 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 mechanism uh, so you have to learn those things to you know increase your knowledge horizons within this uh, the, within this program situation and uh, those are the things actually uh, so i have to say uh, based on this uh, uh, program level and uh, uh, <clears throat> so if you are actually uh, so now at the moment uh, more than 35 students already registered for this program and we have some sort of prospect students who are not uh, still they uh, still uh, not they have done their uh, registration for this program and uh, i hope uh, they they will do their registration as soon as possible uh, before starting uh, this program actually we we have scheduled our inauguration uh, in uh, 15th of uh, september so having a you know very you know uh, very gala event so having it some uh, the flavor of glamour so therefore we have actually we supposed to invite uh, the uh, secretary of the minister of sports and other you know the, the other the distinguished guests who you know we have selected and uh, before to that uh, i actually i i uh, tell you the students to you know do their registrations as soon as possible so then we can start our program uh, on uh, 15th september uh, after our you know uh, inauguration ceremony so i uh, welcome all you to uh, come to that inauguration and uh, do your registration and start this uh, important program to to enhance your knowledge boundaries to you know be a professional uh, fitness trainer personal trainer not only to the local context going further to Uh, the global demands and you know uh, to you know create your uh, brand image to create your individual brand image okay thank you very much for giving this time and uh, i actually uh, all uh, i i welcome uh, dr himan also you know if he, he if he has some sort of you know any you know extended idea before to before to me and uh, so if we have some sort of idea please uh, ask dr himan to you know 
give some sort of idea about you know the the, the present uh, context in this uh, fitness industry in sri lanka thank you very much thank you very much mr barta and uh, i would uh, invite if uh, dr himaj if you have anything to uh, share little more i mean uh, since you have been the first speaker so still you might be having some uh, thoughts share valuable thoughts so it please do share uh, you are welcome to uh, share at this moment uh na uh, nothing much actually i think i have spoken about uh, everything i have to say but basically uh, what i want our students to do a uh, bit of a hard work uh, on this particular subject uh, because most of them are not uh, like uh, mr bharat uh, emphasize not from the formal education route in the sense have not completed the a level said schools uh, university selection and all that there might be university students university students uh, enroll but uh, i am pretty sure the most of the students uh, will be uh, from the non formal uh, kind of a background uh, because of that we know the level of their uh, intelligence Uh, the experience and the commitment so in that case we need to start from the grassroots level in industry wise what i have found everywhere i mean in western countries there is a huge demand even in middle east there is a huge demand for fitness and personal training it's a highly paid job and you need to develop your qualifications otherwise without proper qualification those people or the institute won't recognize you the problem in sri lanka we don't have a kind of a recognize regulating body for this uh, sport science and industry so we have recognized sri lanka medical council as the governing body for our students so the medical council when they issue a kind of a professional recognition or a certificate or a registration number that will facilitate you to get the international recognitions without any problem so for that as a foundation institute we are not going to give you kind of a leisure time with me frankly i am telling you you need to do lot of hard work it's a real hard work and i always expect you to become 100% attendee for the lectures this is because this is very important online lectures will be very easy very will be at the very beginners level and those background fundamental knowledge has to absorb from us when you lay on that foundation it will be very easy you to go up to the phd level so we are talking about the bsc level after the diploma so that is the starting point at the post graduate level for non formal students so this is a golden opportunity for you to get enroll as a very well qualified professional in the fitness industry at the end of this course after you graduated with your bsc i want you to become the head of a institute head of a huge gymnasium head of a hotel gymnasium maybe head of a big fitness uh, uh, arena so that is our objective or the aim that you should go up to that level so mere obtaining of a paper qualification won't mean serve the purpose of you and the institute because this is a practical subject this is a practical kind of a profession it's not based on the paperwork you need to go there you need to confront people you have to consult your clients and do the needful for them especially you know there is a huge rise it's a pandemic we call there's a non communicable disease which are called ncds so in western world they have found once one doctor said if a if if somebody can make a pill for this ncds and for health right that should be the 
exercise. So if you prescribe exercise, most of the non-communicable disease and the mental illnesses will be cured, right? That is the best medicine that you can prescribe. So you, in, in near future, there will be huge demand for this fitness industry and the personal trainers. So there will be lesser version of your profession who are called fitness trainers. But our aim to make you the boss or the leader or the head of the institute, right? Because this BSc program will give you the qualification and that will empower you as the leader of the institute. So get hold of this golden opportunity and try to work hard with us. Like I said earlier also, participating into the lectures and the practical class, classes won't sufficient. You need to follow a lot of references given by us, our lecturers, a lot of internet-based, web-based learning, references, and get ready with that. And other thing, you need to improve your English. Without English, you won't be able to get a foreign job, right? Definitely, they will last for TOEFL or the ELTS or the work-based kind of a English proficiency uh, level certificate. So uh, we have incorporated kind of a, a English improvement lessons uh, teaching in parallel with this course. So therefore, what I want all of you to do a small search or a survey on the fitness industry in Sri Lanka and especially in Middle East and uh, UK and USA and other available countries and see the job opportunities. And uh, even you can enlighten us uh, the demands and the expectation from particular region or a country which should uh, give into the students in our BSc course. So without knowing, without in parallel with international requirements and what, the, what they've been done, what they need out of a personal trainer, fitness uh, coach or a professional, no point of teaching you a BSc degree. Right At the end of the course, this is not a paper qualification. This is kind of a practical experience job title. So you need to be thorough with your profession, your skills, your knowledge. Then only they will recognize you as a professional fitness kind of a uh, guru. Right. So actually, uh, uh, Professor BLH said, uh, uh, in his uh, talk. Actually, I met him at the Commonwealth uh, Games. Now, there are a lot of debates about this Commonwealth uh, scenario, but beside that, so I, I happened to talk to him a few hours and we had a big discussion regarding the fitness uh, industry in Sri Lanka and elsewhere. So I thought that he's a kind of a very valuable asset to this kind of a uh, course, a degree. Then immediately I contact uh, Mr. Bharata and said I have found a kind of a, a valuable diamond out of this fitness uh, and uh, sports industry. We'll uh, invite him as a senior experienced lecturer and resource person. So that give us a scintillating kind of a uh, input to the course and he's well experienced. And uh, let me tell you about him and he's uh, conducting a lot of training programs representing Olympic panel. So very recently he went to Malaysia. Actually, when I was inviting him, he was in Malaysia, just arrived from Malaysia. And he did uh, some uh, coaching and teaching for the diving sports, right? So he has I mean, kind of a huge experience and we will utilize his knowledge and experience. And uh, actually he's kind of a, my teacher and I want all the students to respect all the lecturers right? Uh, not to worship them, but to adhere and follow the rules, regulation and advice given by them during the lectures and the practicals, right? So that's all from my side. I think those advices will be well taken from your side. And I think most of the students are aware of me. And uh, those uh, two professors and uh, uh, Ms. Eranga, uh, who will be doing uh, motor learning and skill acquisition, and uh, most of the time, uh, Mr. Vikramasinghe will be there. So
so as a team we will try our best to give you the updated core knowledge the fundamentals of science sports medicine biomechanics sports nutrition and the industry to become a great personal trainer entrepreneur thank you very much for listening and congratulations and best regards from my side thanks good night yes i certainly believe that uh, your advice and guidelines are well taken doctor and uh, thank you once again uh, it is dr himan de silva who is international sports medicine coordinator at ministry of health he is also a olympic sports and exercise physician at teaching hospital karapitiya so uh, i think the luckiest students enrolling with us right so uh, we have almost exceeding our expected time i really want to remember uh, mr bharat and ms priyani and ms pamudita who has been really supporting to facilitate this program at this evening so i cordially welcome uh, dr vijayanta ukwatta to uh, do the vote of thanks doctor it is yeah. to you good evening uh, yeah first of all i i'm sorry i can't open my camera because due to the power cut so because hope you don't want to see me as like a ghost okay right executive chairman champika amarasekara sri lanka foundation institute director general professor rm vijayaratna uh, dr roshandi lima lincoln university country code director and most well, uh, valuable invited guest professor uh, amarnath and professor pereira and dr himan and mr bharat and ladies and gentlemen newly enrolled student for the degree program on behalf of sri lanka foundation and lincoln university i would like to extend my gratitude to all of you for the attending this event i must mention our deep sense uh, sense of appreciation for chairperson sri lanka foundation and dr roshan professor amarnath and professor pereira mr uh, dr himan and mr bharat for you uh, sharing your pro uh, program schedule and your valuable and encouragement thoughts in this occasion i may like to express my sincere thanks madam uh, champika amarasekar sldfi you are the person uh, every success of, of this program and uh, lincoln university of malaysia and country coordinator mr uh, roshan uh, uh, and uh, they are team, your team take wow. necessary step to introduce this degree program and i would like to uh, acknowledge all of the support given to sldfi uh, and dr himan thanks again been with us considerable time period so uh finally i wish to all of you i wish all of you for your uh, new enrollment student for your success and academic achievement and future endeavors thank you very much very good night thank you doctor so we find up today's session thank you, and uh, i wish you sorry, sorry wish to, you sorry good to, luck sorry to intrude sorry to intrude uh, i think uh, we we'll have to allow few students a little bit of a time for the queries that they have because we have the entire panel with us um so i think my i i feel that we should allow the students to raise some queries if they have anything yeah it it's my thought i feel that we haven't given of course them. you know we have to give them uh, you know some yeah, time to ask yes that's good This is a question. I think if all approves, we can go ahead with it. <laughs> yes. Any, 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 any further clarifications about uh, this program? You know, uh, any, any, any questions related to our, you know, semester wise programs and uh, the modules? Uh, 
Actually, I have a question. Uh, basically, uh, I'm actually reading my advanced diploma yet uh, in Sri Jagadhanapura, uh, which I informed to the one actually spoke to me over the phone. And uh, I think I have about another one and a half, uh, kind of like one semester to be completed. But as you just said, uh, uh, the program is going to be started by uh, September 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Will it be a problem for me to uh, start the course beforehand or am I supposed to like wait for the next batch? Yeah, it all depends. Uh, Mr. Bharata, can I answer that question? Okay, sure. Okay, great. Um, it all depends on, uh, you know, how many semesters you have completed. And if you are in the last semester, uh, best thing to do is share the, uh, what do you call your, your uh, transcripts, the exams that you have completed to the person who was talking to you. Uh, then we shall take it upon from the onwards because uh, we'll have to have a look at the, the number of credits that you have covered. And if so, if uh, the uh, panel feels that uh, you have covered sufficient number of credits, then they will allow you to enroll subject to providing your certificate and course completion of diploma. Uh, if, we are, if you feel that you haven't, you haven't done sufficient academia, academic work, then you might have to enroll yourself in the next batch only. The first thing you to do is share your transcript and uh, uh, the subjects what you have completed. That's the first thing you do. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Uh, also, the thing is uh, with, with, with the COVID and you know all the, the, the crisis which we had to face during last uh, few months, uh, we had to delay some exams and I've been, we have been doing the practicals these days and, and officially we have completed the semester one exams. Uh, and half of the exams of the semester two is completed and we are heading to the sem third semester exams by, I think, hopefully, uh, the thing is, uh, the, the, the timetable is going on as we planned, but not the exams because of all this crisis, because there are about 200 people in the badge uh, who are coming from like different, different region uh, all over the Sri Lanka. Uh, but however, let me just try to uh, get what you uh, asked. Uh, and oh, uh, also, I can get a letter from uh, Sri Javada for university, probably from the dean uh, uh, of the applied science. Uh, I'll try to do whatever the official thing that I could do from my end and uh, I'll try to uh, send those things to the, the coordinator. Yeah, that would be better. That would be better if you can uh, come up with some kind of an evidence to prove. So um, the coordinator... No worries at all. I will do that. The, yeah, that will help the coordinators to get along with the mapping. We, we understand. We understand. No worries at all. Thank you very much. The crisis, but we had all the exams are pushed and kind of a uh, lot of delays. It has caused a lot of delays for the last two years. It is quite Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that, is what, that is what we are quite flexible to see that because some of the students, they were supposed to complete the program by this time as scheduled, but they haven't completed. And uh, we also like to help the students to see to that, uh, you know, without further wasting any time, if they can get yeah, embarked. I should students. be able to get a letter. I'll, 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 sure. I'll get that letter sorted. Yeah, go ahead Thank and see. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Any other questions, please? You can, yeah, you can even ask questions in single. Yeah? You don't mind. Uh, sir, sir I, I would like to know that uh, how's the uh, uh, practical classes are going to be held. That means that is a weekly wise, so monthly two classes. So, because I have no idea about that. We have scheduled uh, two classes per month, two on site classes per month at the Sri Lanka Foundation because, you know, we can utilize our gymnasium and, you know, the facilities at the Sri Lanka Foundation, especially for the practical session. And the, the others are going on uh, in the online as online sessions. And for the which uh, subjects we will have the uh, practical classes, sir? Yes, every weekends only. No, no I mean the, what we, which subjects like uh, anatomy or the exercise? every every sub every subject actually we have allocated two on site classes at the Sri Lanka Foundation. Okay, thank you. For for fifteen subjects. Uh, just one question. I just want to know uh, uh, about how many days or weeks advance notice will we have uh, before we have a practical session? Thank you. Now at the orientation, you know, at the orientation, actually we are sharing our uh, schedules. Okay. So you can go through our schedules and you can get uh, uh, advanced knowledge about uh, the, uh, the time plan for the on-site uh, classes as well as the uh, online classes. Okay, so you can arrange your 
uh, the time schedules according to our given uh, the schedules or our given you know the program schedule <clears throat> thank you any further questions uh sir uh, this class or week week classes or weekend so we are conducting all the classes in the weekends okay so that's easy for us to you know manage all the classes in the weekends especially the on online and classes are conducting in every saturday and sunday and as well as the on site classes also we we actually we supposed to schedule in the the weekend okay thank you and actually uh, so i uh, again i want to remind you you know do your uh, registrations as soon as possible because we have scheduled our inauguration ceremony uh, on 15th next month so so therefore you know before to that you know please do your registrations immediately so complete your registrations immediately because we have to go through a registration protocol Yes, uh, I think uh, what Mr. Bharat was explaining is quite um, very clear. Uh, if you have not enrolled, if you have not got enrolled yourself, what you have to do is, uh, it's a process. Uh, all the night you can't just call and say, "I would like to join this program." You know, please accommodate me to the batch. Huh? Last moment, <laughs> don't don't uh, don't put uh, don't put Mr. Bharat in trouble. Yeah, actually, uh, we have that type of experience, especially in uh, our, you know, other courses. You know, last yeah. moment they come to us and you know, they go, you know yes. please do uh, my registrations immediately before to. Yes, that cannot be done here. So it's a process. You have to submit quite a lot of documents because it's a degree program. You have to understand. Mm -hmm. So um, there are not protocols. like diploma. Yeah. Not like yeah. diploma. This is actually you have to go through a you know comprehensive protocol to do your registration. Yes, uh, a bit of a bit of a bit of a. Painful process to do this. <laughs> they will ask yeah, you a lot of documents. Right. Uh, mm. Even the birth certificate, they will ask you to translate and bring in English. So yes, all sir. these things, last moment, you won't be able to do. Yeah, the best thing what Mr. Bharata was telling from the inception, the beginning, I saw that he was just uh, emphasizing and insisting that uh, you may get enrolled because he knows that he has a lot of, I think, his past experience. Basically, he's talking that uh, running at the coming at the last moment and saying, uh, "Can you just accommodate me?" You know, I'm sorry that we won't be able to do that. That's what he was. Uh, emphasizing, uh, repeatedly telling that please get yourself enrolled in advance, not at the last moment. So this is what he was trying to tell always. Uh, I think I I elaborated what he wanted to tell. I think I just elaborated. <laughs> he he didn't use these technical words. <laughs> there are so many documents to be um, submitted, uh, starting from your birth certificate to be translated, etc. Because uh, foreign universities will like to see. All these sing, um, single list documents to be translated in English because the registrar's office will not understand the um, local language. So whatever the documents we produce to the foreign university, we'll have to give it in a, a translated version. So that is what takes time. It is all turbulent uh, environment. Yeah, it takes time. So prepare yourself in advance. Don't wait until the last moment. Any other questions, please? I think uh, we can. We can even. Answer all uh, in, in single is we don't mind asking questions because uh, I know because we, we expect you to uh, grow and um, learn this so called English language huh? <laughs> once you complete your degree. But uh, for the time being, let's keep some space and time for that and let's see that if you can ask questions in single. Because what is important is we all understand single. Myself okay. and the, no all language and barriers language. to ask questions. Yes. No language. Yeah. No barriers because this is a competency driven program. Yeah. So uh, language is important, communication, what matters? So please uh, raise your questions in single list, we don't mind that. One of the questions is, I don't have to worry about it. 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 They are using the single language as well. But you know, 80% of more than, you know, 80 to 90% of English. But if there are any, you know, elaborations, further elaborations, they, they will use some, uh, you know, Single language as well. Are don't worry about uh, the you know, your, especially you know, some you know having some sort of you know, 
resistance theorem, but don't worry about the you know language. No language barriers. Okay. Yes. End of the day, what matters is the competency and the knowledge that you have. It's not about the language. Yes. Language is required, as Mr. Bharat was but, saying. Competency. Our lecturers will try to, uh, you know, maintain instruction in English, but they are required. They will use a uh, singular language to elaborate and explain. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to ask one question, actually two questions. Thank you so much for explaining and everything. Um, we had a clear idea. I mean, I had a clear idea actually. So I I have two questions. One is being uh, I'm I'm one of Mr. Bharat's student and Mr. D Dr. Himans also as well. So oh. I have uh, I have started my diploma course uh, during the pandemic time, and we've been uh, doing this. Uh, I, I think the last bit. Um, so am I able to uh, enroll with this? And the question number two is. Um, and like uh, Dr. Roshan said, what are the uh, required documents so that we can start working on them uh, and uh, registering with the relevant documents as soon as possible? Thank you so much. Okay, uh, the requirement documents, let me briefly tell you. Mr. Bharata, am I allowed to speak? Yeah, sure, sure, Mr. Dr. Roshan. Right. Uh, I think the allowed documents, the very basic documents that we need is your birth certificate translated in English. If you have a passport, a copy of your passport, a birth certificate translated into English. There is a sworn translator who will do that. Uh, and number two, we will require a passport size photograph with white, white background, three photographs, um, the birth certificate translated in English, passport three certificates, O levels and A levels. Uh, if you have A levels so or equivalent qualification, if your yeah, certificates, are, yes, if your certificates are not in English, uh, probably we will need original certificates. Not the original. We'll need copies of original certificate, which you have to obtain from um, Ministry of Education, uh, Ministry of Examination. They will have your originals. Um, but if you if you do not have all these at this moment, don't bother and don't rush. But we insist you to some or other uh, uh, prepare yourself to complete your personal file. Until you complete your personal file, we will not be able to give you the offer letter. That is the problem. You can join the program, you can be in the class, all these things, but no point if you are not getting your offer letter. So offer letter is very important. So to get this offer letter, I'm telling these documents you need to um, have intact and then you need to submit. So then after that, your diploma, um, or completion letter or uh, something similar needs to be there. Um, these are the important set of documents that we will need at this stage to register you. And um, uh, that was question number two. I just, uh, I couldn't uh, follow the question number one. If you can come up, please come again with the question number one. Um, the question number one was, uh, I'm a student from uh, Sri Lanka's uh, Padanama institution for diploma yeah. class. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we are following the last bit of it. And yeah. I want to know uh, without the completion of that or with uh, or while following this, am I able to enroll with this uh, bachelor's? If you, if you are the last stage, I don't see a problem. You, you shall contact Mr. Bharata. He should be able to help you. Clearly understood. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, just just something that I forgot. We are conducting this English program, um, developmental English program for all the students who are doing credit transfer, professional. So it's given free of charge for all the students. It's conducted on Friday evening, late evenings by qualified uh, lecturers. Actually, lecturers, they are not lecturers. Some of the lecturers are examiners of IELTS, IELTS, they are examiners. So you get a good opportunity to learn from them, right? So it's not just English, developmental English. So they will be teaching you throughout the program on, uh, uh, on, uh, on being conducted, I think, uh, on Fridays. I'm not sure it's Fridays or somewhat, but it's, after the office hours, it's generally about seven o'clock to nine. Likewise, uh, don't think because it is given as 
um, you know, free of charge, you know, what we are thinking is having such qualification and not having the language competency is that you will not be able to discount your qualification at the right place, in the right part of the world. So that is what we are, um, uh, you know, we have introduced this English, developmental English program for students will be able to, to clear these foreign examinations like TOEFL, IELTS and all. Uh, it required, uh, <clears throat> what do you call, uh, marks. They have these uh, different band levels. So we expect our students to at least be <clears throat> um, competent to clear with uh, band six or seven in the, the program. So this is our expectation. With that expectations only, we have uh, introduced these programs uh, to, to, build, to actually to build or to, what do you say, to uh, uh, produce a 360 degree competent person in all ways. Language shouldn't be a barrier, but for better prospects in the life, you will have to move out of the country. So when that time comes, this shouldn't be a barrier. So that is what we are planning in advance make sure that you get the right uh, dosage, the proper magnitude, so that you will be able to discount this when it's required. Thank you. So English is taught throughout the program as a subject. That's not a mandatory subject, that's a core subject, it's a supporting subject, but it's taught throughout the program. Not just one or two hours, it's taught throughout the program so that you will not only able to clear the exam, we need you to, uh, you know, excel. We need you to be competent of using this language by person. Thank you. Any other questions, please, before we wind up? Singling, Prashna, I know there's a question uh, uh, based on this registration process. And uh, better to contact uh, Ms. Priyani or Pamudita uh, to do your registration. I'll, uh, I'll put their uh, contact numbers in this wall. And uh, better to get their contact numbers and uh, speak with them about uh, the protocol of the registration. Okay, then they will help you to do your registration perfectly. Yeah, that's, that's the best way forward. Yeah, please. I think probably most of you have got an email if you have not got an email i think that email they would have mentioned this uh, list of uh, documents required but if you are not um, still if you haven't got that piece of information go ahead and contact these people Uh, Dr. Roshan, I think it is better to send an email to all the all the participants, those who participate today, uh, mentioning the required documents. I think it is better. Yes, I think if they have their contact details, they will be able to send uh, send out an email <coughs> saying uh, the required documents. Yes. That good to hear from. <laughs> good to yes, hear yes, from. yes. <laughs> With the power cut. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was unable to attend, uh, but uh, yeah. at the 11, 11th hour, I, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Congratulations, congratulations. No worries, we will meet you at the uh, inauguration ceremony. Ah, sure, sure. Yeah. Mr. Bartha, yeah. I am very sorry to participate in the event uh, with the power of failure. Yeah. I was unable to attend, yes. Yeah, Pro Professor, we will, Professor yes. we will see a lot of you, don't worry. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Congratulations to those who participate today. We'll forego this. We'll see yes. lots, quite a lot of you in there. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> then, uh, thank you very much. Such Please a participation. Like right? Thank you very much for everyone. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think we intruded and, uh, you know, we intruded the, <laughs> what do you call the schedule? Huh? And we yes. time to wind up now. <laughs> yes. Okay. Shall okay. we wind up the session? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think we can wind up. We can yes. wind up. And uh, okay. before we wind up, as Mr. Bharata said, once again, uh, please don't wait until the last moment. 
right? If you are decided whether you want to, you know, pursue a bachelor degree, the best thing is to do is don't wait until the last moment. Act upon, act, act in advance and complete your registration. Thank you very much and good night. From Thank you very much and good good luck to everyone. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Good. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Sir.